a morena tatau a tu tahi rā e tika na kia mihi a kia koutou ngā timoki a nā koutou te rau tawhiri a nā koutou ngā tawhirotanga ko tau ki rungi a mātou ko tau ki rungi a koutou nā reira a tēnei ka mihi kia koutou a kia koutou ngā kaiwhakahare o te wā o tēnei o ngā wānanga o tātou e tika na kia mihi mo tērā o ngā whakapeto moi Hoi anō kia kōrua matua a kōrua ko te karu mātai whetu a e rangi mō ngā wero, mō ngā pātaritari ko whakataku toi te rānei a tēnei ka mihi kia kōrua A tuatahi rā hei himata māku he paku whakapāha kia koutou te hunga kōrero Māori Te tiro anau ki te hunga nei whakaro ake au a kia huri tēnei o ngā kauhau ki te reo parawa A i te mea kai roto nei ko wetahi pātaritari ko wetahi wero E hihi anau ki te whakataku toki mua i te hunga nei Ana i reira aroha mai mo tēnei o ngā reo parawa hoi anō ka huri Thank you for having me here this morning I know I was meant to only speak in te reo Māori today The whole kaupapa is about te reo But I really wanted everyone in the room to have an understanding about some of the challenges and some of the issues that are facing te reo today And I wanted to start this koho off a little bit differently So bear with me Does this sound familiar? Your alarm rings It's Monday morning You grab the phone Cut the alarm and get ready for the day, for the week. The kids are stirring, you can hear them in the next room. Mr Nine is up and the TV is on and the volume is full ball. The cat is meowing to be let out. Mr Nine is yelling out to let you know the cat is meowing to be let out. You get up, you head to the kitchen, you hit the jug on. Meanwhile, Mr Seven is up. He's asking if it's a school day. Yes, son, it's a school day. His lip droops. You can hear some excuse about illness coming on. The jug is boiled. The kids need to have breakfast. Is it porridge today or wheat bits? Mr Seven wants spaghetti on toast with eggs. Typical. Okay. Compromise. You can have spaghetti, you can have toast, you're not getting eggs. You get them dressed. Finally, it took you asking the same question 20 times to accomplish this massive feat. Where are your socks? Teeth is brushed, hair looks semi less afro. Beds, mm, they can wait till after school. You get the big bags packed and you're off driving to school. You negotiate back seat fights over the iPad and then fights over the iPhone once the iPad's gone flat. You, uh, you calm down an argument about who would win the battle between Hulk and Superman. Everyone knows that if Hulk's got kryptonite, Superman's a goner. You discuss tangaroa, the water cycle, water pollution as you navigate traffic lights. Next to you at the lights, Mr Seven has spotted a neighbouring vehicle throwing rubbish out the window. Naughty, naughty. You arrive at Kura and you make sure each has the right bag. Meanwhile, you check that Mr Fifteen, who was still in bed when you left, has gotten to his bus on time, but he's not responding to his texts. You run into the school office with Mr Seven in tow booking an appointment to see the dentist because you're sure Mr Seven has been skipping some of his brushing routines. You find out that Mr Nine has haka practice, rugby practice and his mate's birthday party all on the same day. Mr Seven wants to show off his desk where he sits with his bestie and his favourite teacher, Fire Daddy. You find that missing sock and the missing jacket that Mr Nine claimed was stolen. <laughs> Meanwhile, Mr Seven admits he forgot something this morning. His undies. <laughs> Mr Fifteen has text. He's on the bus, but he's short of credit on his phone. And by the way, 
Mum, did you fill out the papers so that I can get on the China trip for school? You go to text back. But the phone has since died because Mr Nine and Mr Seven, OK, must put that in the phone. Oh wait, it's dead. I'll remember. You won't remember. Final goodbye to Mr Seven, his BFF and his teacher. You walk out the school gates, into the car and get ready for your day. Does this sound familiar? Sound familiar? Now imagine doing all of that in a language that you are only still learning. That you are only still learning. Māori language at home is actually the core component to ensuring whether or not our language survives. You'll notice that I've titled my address, can I have the next slide please? Te reo o te kainga, he uri o pani, kāri o na hoa, kāri o na weruweru, kāri o na rawa. Māori language in our homes is like an abandoned child, without friend, without clothing, of no consequence or value. The purpose for us today is to have a discussion about language in the homes. The challenges whānau face in doing this, and then to look at areas where you, where I, where our tertiary institutions might better empower those mothers, those fathers, those whānau to take on the challenge of incorporating te reo Māori in their day-to-day -day living. Before I expand on this, However, it's probably important for me to give you a little bit about myself and my background. Um, as Jill said, my name's Charisma. I'm not an expert in te reo Māori. I do not have a doctorate in Māori language or Māori cultural revitalisation. I'm not a professor in community development or in motivating social change. I am no recognised authority on innovation or on collaborative impact. Neither am I a pro-vice-chancellor who can determine the direction of our academic institutions and the focus of the studies therein. Yet, I'm here today, got the nerve to come and talk about each of these issues. <laughs> Despite declaring what I'm not, it's probably really important right up front to tell you what I am. The first is, I'm a mum. I'm a mum who is a learner of te reo Māori. And I've been learning te reo now for over 20 years, and I still use the word learner. I'm referred to as a second language learner. I'm a second language learner, I'm a mum, and I have three sons. Mr 15, te Aotahi, Mr 9, Taiki, and Mr 7, Aki, commando, whom I'm attempting to raise with te reo Māori as their first language. Next slide, please. My second is my job. In my day-to-day -day job, amongst other things, I'm charged with ensuring the success of my iwi's Māori language revitalisation strategy. Ko tahi mano kaika, ko tahi mano wawata. In 2000, Te Runanga Ngaitahu ratified our strategy, which primarily focuses on intergenerational transmission of the language. It aims to support families to start using te reo, as a primary language of communication, as a way of bringing it back from the brink of extinction. Bringing it back from the brink of extinction. That sounds a bit extreme. Am I just exaggerating uh, to make a point? Well, I'll let you be the, the, the decider of that. So let's have a look then at the health of te reo Māori. In terms of languages generally, there are six and a half thousand languages in the world currently. Um, 2,000 of those languages have less than 1,000 speakers each. It's been estimated by some by, by the year 2100 that 90% of all of the languages in the world will be extinct. Languages around the world are more endangered than any flora or fauna species on the planet. It's important here to note that experts in language revitalisation from around the world would tell us that for a language to thrive and survive and be considered a living language, 
that it needs to be spoken as the day-to-day -day form of communication between parents and their children. It needs to be in the home. If te reo Māori is to be safe and survive in the next hundred years, it needs to be spoken. It's pretty simple. Not just on the marae and not just in classrooms or on the radio or on TV or for official purposes, but in the daily activities of whānau, of us, uh, in normal community interactions and in all ways with the, traveller, the Chinese travelling Mr 15s and the rubbish culprit spotting Mr 7s. It needs to be spoken. So how healthy is Te Reo Māori? Well, over the last 40 years, we've achieved some fantastic things. Te Reo Māori continues to be an official language of the country. We've got 460 kōhanga reo. There are 72 kura kaupapa throughout the motu. We've got a TV station dedicated to Te Reo, and we've got another that broadcasts bilingually. There are 29 iwi Māori radio stations throughout the land that have a high level of broadcast in Te Reo Māori. We've got a wide range of books and resources written in Te Reo, available in schools, in libraries and in many shops. And some government and local government departments provide their material bilingually. We also have a range of courses and programmes available throughout our different tertiary institutions teaching Te Reo Māori. Currently, the government spends a minimum of $225 million per annum supporting Te Reo Māori. It's a big number. So the heart monitor is on. We know the language has got a pulse. There are some nurses in the ward ready and waiting to jump in and save us if we need them. But how are we really tracking? What does it look like? I'm going to ask for some volunteers, our Tomotu crew. Can I get you to air two, please, Fane? And Liz and Tans and Talon. So that's seven. Oh, and our lovely volunteers here in the front, please. Can I get the ten of you to stand, please? This is our Māori population Fano. These 10 people represent māori -dom. We currently number just under 670,000. I think we're one in seven of all New Zealanders are Māori. How many have I got? Have I got seven? Four, yes, thank you. Can I please have, oh no, we've got a bit of a distinct. So this is our rangatahi proportion of māori oh. Love it. <laughs> thank you, Chris. One and one, um, one third of all of Māori are under the age of 15. So this is a big chunk of us. Um, Liz, can I get you to step to the side a little bit? Liz is Māori Tim in Te Waipaunamu. This is Te Kau Maui, and that's us here down in Te Waipaunamu. Kia ora, Liz. Um, where are we? If I get, Auntie Daff, if I can get you to squidge this way. This is Māori Tim in Tamaki Makoto. This is how big the population of Māori are in comparison to the rest of māori who live in Tāmaki Makoto. Right, how do I do this one? Tans, can I get you to shift over with Liz, please? That's Ngāpuhi out there, our biggest iwi. Thank you, Kōrua. Let's have a look at some stats around Te Reo. So if we keep Ngāpuhi over to the side there, Three out of ten people within Ngāpuhi have got an ability in Te Reo. Three out of ten. When you come down south, our stats get a little bit worse. But if we look at Māori Dim in general, Liz and Tans over to the far side there is the total population within Māori Dim that has some capacity in Te Reo Māori. Now some capacity ranges from a e i o u te nākwe, right up to our most proficient and eloquent of speakers. Those two people on the far side, that is it. That is how many of our population can speak te reo Māori. Only 5% of the Māori population can speak Māori well. 
are confident and capable of having conversations in total immersion environments. Five percent. Tans, can I get you to put your arm out, please? If you remember me talking about where is the essential focus for us to save the language and the role of Fano in that, that arm of Tanya's represents 2.6% of our speaking population, not Māori our speaking population. 2.6% of our Māori speakers use Te Reo Māori as their primary language of communication in their homes. 2.6%. Another 10%, thanks Tans, another 10% of our speakers, so only this 20%, Another 10% use an equal mix of Māori and English. We have 87% of Liz and Tans only, 87% of people that can speak Māori do not speak Māori at home. Here's another stat that I'll end on. Fly Margaret, can I get you to step, just take a step forward, thank you. If all of these people represent now Tamariki Māori, Fire Margaret is the one Māori child that is accessing Te Reo Māori at school. These other nine Māori children do not get access to Te Reo Māori at school. And we already know that the majority of them are not getting access to Te Reo Māori at home. Kapai, thank you Fano. The politics of truth, matua. So despite these years of significant investment, the number of kōhanga we have, fantastic, we've got a TV station, we've got this many radio stations, we spend $225 oh, million per annum on Te Reo Māori. UNESCO continues to list Te Reo Māori as an endangered language. And the recent census, well 2013 census, shows us that there continues to be a steady decline in the house of Te Reo Māori, despite all of our investments. I'm in the privileged position of not only helping to drive Māori language revitalisation efforts within my iwi and in the many communities that we support, but also knowing intimately the challenges faced domestically on a daily basis with my own children and my own struggle to raise them in Te Reo. The Ngaitahu Māori Language Revitalisation Strategy, Kotahi Mano Kaika, aims to have a thousand Ngaitahu households speaking Te Reo Māori by 2025. That's pretty aspirational. If you look at the stats in regards to Te Reo Māori, Ngaitahu continues to be the most impoverished, impoverished of Te Reo of any iwi in the country. What we're aiming to do is to support families to start using the language that they have with their children and growing this so it becomes their primary language of communication with each other. But we've got these stats and they're pretty critical. One in five Māori are speakers of te reo, only 5% claim to be able to speak Māori well and that crucial, crucial one, only 2.6% of our speakers use their language as a primary language of communication at home. Hence the reason I say, ko te reo o te kainga he uri o pani. Māori language in our homes is actually an abandoned child. I label it abandoned because this focus of supporting Fano to use the language has largely been neglected in our language revitalisation efforts. We've supported schools, We've supported media, we spend a heck of amount of money, but we've forgotten the value of Fano. We've forgotten the pivotal role that they play in ensuring the survival of the language. Why is this? There are issues that as a mum I face daily, and I see my peers who are attempting to use Te Reo Māori with their own children face the same battles. And my challenge today to us all is what is the role that we play, that our institutions play, in supporting the grassroots level 
of language revitalisation, supporting our homes, supporting the mums and dads who are doing the do. Let me share with you a little bit about my misters 15, 9 and 7. When Mr. 15 was born, I was a fresh-faced, can I get the next slide please? I was a fresh-faced university graduate with good grades in school C, tuhi tuhi and kōrero, and then my bursary papers. With my flash-framed, freshly printed Māori language degree, I was determined to conquer the universe and use as much of my language as possible with our latest edition. What I perhaps was least prepared for was combating a lot of ingrained and incorrect assumptions from others about Māori speaking children, about bilingual children. Oh, you're only speaking Māori to him. Will he be able to speak English? Will he have speech impediments? Will he be able to go to a mainstream school? Oh, I've heard that if you speak Māori to your kids, they'll be behind at school. Why bother? Isn't it a dying language anyway? The only job he'll be able to get is as a real Māori teacher. That's not real Māori you're speaking. My elders didn't speak like you. You're not going to use that horrible southern dialect with them, are you? <laughs> the saddest thing to report is that these comments did not come from strangers. They didn't come from outsiders and they actually didn't come from non-Māori. Although a lot of New Zealanders still ask us which foreign country we're from when we're out and about, it still makes me smile. These comments came from my closest of family and friends. There's a couple of issues here. Actually, there's a lot of issues here, but I'm only going to talk about two of them. One is around the value that people see in Te Reo Māori and whether it can contribute to a well-rounded New Zealand citizen. Is it relevant? Can it contribute meaningfully to lifestyle, to livelihood? The question I pose is that if we increase the value of Te Reo Māori, would this lead to an increased number of people not only learning Te Reo, but speaking and using Te Reo? And how do we increase the value if that's the case? The second I want to talk about is that around attitude and how do we build strong champions of te reo Māori, of bilingualism. What shocked me the most is that these comments came from staunch, proud Māori. But for whatever reason, speaking or more so using te reo Māori suddenly become a threat to them. One of the greatest challenges we face in the revitalisation of te reo Māori is actually convincing our own that it's worth it. And then building capacity and confidence within our whānau to help us achieve this. I'm not talking about building more speakers, although we definitely need more speakers. What I'm talking about is building the cheerleaders, building the champions, building the drivers. Cheerleaders who, regardless of their own language capacity, will stand strong and support proudly those that are doing it. We also need more champions and drivers. These are the people who rally others. They get them together. They find support networks. They build networks with each other so that these whānau who are committed to this huge challenge have a support base that they can rely on. Next slide, please. Kāori ona wedu You'll remember that I said earlier that I've been learning Māori for a long time. When my children were born, particularly the eldest, I was a fresh-eyed, bushy-tailed graduate. Um, but despite this investment of time and significant student loan, might I say, I had neither the vocabulary or the structures to help with the day-to-day -day use of te reo Māori with this new child of mine. Imagine this, new baby in tow, your nose smells something not quite right in the nether regions. And underneath your hand, as you lift him from his bed, his clothes are drenched. What do you say? Kei te haere a tamahai rawa ko rewi ki te pāmu. No, that's not going to work. He aparo whero tēnei. He whero tēnei aparo. No, that's not going to work. Ko auraki taku mauka. 
<laughs> no, that's not working. Let's try some passives. Ka kainia te maunu e te ika. No, not working. How about a whakatauki? Whai a te te kahurangi ki te tua huko e mehe maunga teitei. Well, it could be a maunga teitei that you're about to address in that kupi. The usual language that we throw about carelessly in English just wasn't available to me in Māori. I did have some tools. Ai, kau, kaua, haramai, e noho, e tu, e moi. But those types of commands only go so far. For a language to be thriving, it needs to be used in all situations, in all environments, and I just was not equipped and I felt like I'd been ripped off $40,000 of my student loan. For many of our institutions, this is still very much the case. We don't produce speakers that can speak. Yes, they understand the mechanics of the language, but for the investment we make, we're essentially sending them out to the world like the day they were born, naked and ill-equipped for the day-to-day -day challenges of including te reo Māori on a day-to-day -day basis. Next slide, please. One of the things as a parent that I noticed as my boys continue to grow up is that I found it really hard to find information which gave me practical steps and strategies to overcome the barriers I was facing in raising them bilingually. It just wasn't available to me. Sure, there was some academic research coming out of, of universities overseas, but the language used, despite it being in English, was just not the normal Joe Bloggs sort of English that I was used to. How do I combat my sons deciding one day that speaking te reo Māori at the supermarket is embarrassing? How do I battle how do I battle them when they start responding to me in English, despite the fact that I'd only ever spoken to them in Māori? Was this normal for a bilingual child? How did I stop them now suddenly introducing English words into their Māori sentences for words they really know? And why are they doing this? Mama, Kate, they're too tired at home. Mama, here you know, kia hori ki te shop ki te huku chocolate bar, ne? <laughs> Boy, your pū ana rawa ki ngā kupu. I continue, what I continue to struggle with today is the limited access to practical supports, to resources and research which helps me as a mum in my home grow my knowledge as my bilingual children develop and gives me strategies that I can employ to help combat issues as they arise. Nā reire hōma. Te reo Māori is struggling and must regain a foothold within our homes and communities as a usable language if it has a chance of surviving into the future. So I lay a plea, I lay a challenge to all of us here today and particularly to those who are working in our institutions. You have the resources, you have the skills, the capacity to produce research, to produce resources and to provide learning opportunities which will have meaningful impact on the revitalisation of te reo Māori. Next slide please. To benefit these guys, Mr 15, Mr 9 and Mr 7. What I fail to see happening in any great depth is linkages to these efforts, to your efforts within the institutions, to grassroots level efforts, to home level efforts. So I implore you all please, explore and develop relationships with those on the ground who are leading the front of Māori language revitalisation in our homes and in our communities. Help them find friends. Help dress them. Help equip them with tools and with knowledge to make their job easier. Because together, and only together, can we truly make meaningful insteps into reinvigorating, regenerating te reo Māori in our homes so that it's no longer the abandoned child in a journey to save it for our future generations. Tēnei au e mihi ana kia tātou, a tēnā rā tātou katoa.